Just when you think it can't rain any harder, it starts raining harder. So this rainy weather is on Prince Edward Island as I head towards Kingston in Canada. And the weather just got unbelievably bad. Then it improved, then it got bad again. But I had some great time, so stick with me. The romance of the open road, second day of rain. And it's losing its edge a little bit. It's not too bad, it's just, you know, you're sweaty with a raincoat on. Should clear up this afternoon. So. I was hoping you will. been raining like this for hours. Certainly autumn's on its way. Just within a couple of days, everything changes. This heavy rain just stalked me for days and days. It was unbelievably heavy rain. And so little shelter on this rail trail. But it was a good ride. Oops. The whole trail's turned into a river. Have to ride in the soft ridge. Gullies breaking off on the side and you can't see them in the water. It's pissing down for hours now. Just when you think it can't rain any harder, it starts raining harder. It's not freezing cold, but if I stop, I'm certainly going to get cold, so I've just got to keep cool. Trail becomes a lake. I found a place to pull over. Hardware store in Wellington. Doesn't seem much of a town, but it's got a bit of a veranda. So I'm happy. It's not too cold, but wow, it's been raining. Like a stalk in a horror movie, this rain just hung around. Even when it wasn't raining, I could just see it hanging around, ready to pounce. And more red barns. Red barns everywhere in the United States and Canada. So my bike had this pinion internal gearing, which you can see here, so completely sealed, and a belt drive, which was great. It's a very gritty sort of clay sand. So the town of Picton really showed the history of this area very nicely in their buildings and the weather must be perfect for gardens because there were some beautiful gardens all the way along this part of Canada. another storm cloud chasing me so I uh, saw this little farmhouse on the side of the road eclectic collection of stuff in the yard I thought I'd just pop in and say hey do you mind if I camp in your corner of your yard and they said fine and then his wife came out and said why don't you camp under the little shed so that's me for the night pretty nice lovely people came out and he's always so friendly so I'll catch the ferry across tomorrow morning and this little act of kindness and hospitality just epitomised the wonderful spirit I came across with Canadians all the time. Cities, towns, they were great. Day three in the rain, 6am. So previously it used to rain in the afternoon. Now the last three, four days it seems to be raining in the morning. So a slow start. Sitting on a veranda in the wet and cold eating my breakfast out of a tin, talking to Canadians week after week. Living the dream, mate. No, seriously, the Canadians were fantastic. Such warm, hospitable people. They were lovely. They made my trip. Thank you so much to every Canadian I met. Heading off into the rain after spending a night on this veranda. 
thanks to the kindness of strangers. I just knocked on the door as it started raining yesterday. So, Canadians are fantastic. People are fantastic. Picton, heading towards the ferry, into Kingston. That's my shoulder. Coming down to catch the ferry. What a beautiful little town. Once again, that black cow out was stalking me and about to dump more on me. Waiting in a public toilet for the rain to finish before crossing the ferry from Prince Edward Island. And uh, looking at the radar map, I realise that the uh, Early explorers didn't have much imagination. The same names you see here are English names that you see in both New Zealand and Australia and also South Africa. So, there's a Wellington, there's a Picton, there's a Perth. Jeez, it's been raining like this for three hours. No sign of a let up. I thought it was going to stop. I was a glass half empty person I'd be pretty peeved by what was about to happen to me but I was already wet all over so plunging my foot into a deep cold puddle doesn't really make any difference wow, puddle of water. Kingston's 50 kilometers away before Kingston there's a town called Bath, and it really should be called Showers. This is wet. It's wet. Colder than it was yesterday. I can't afford to get cold today because I won't recover. This is the first time I was really worried that if I did stop and get cold, I just wouldn't be able to warm back up again. So this trail I was on follows a series of battlegrounds or battlefields. Uh, obviously where there's battles there are unfortunately deaths and there are cemeteries if you like your history this is a good little ride to take so well, this must have liked ice cream Darn, this damn rain was just following me. It wasn't raining 20 kilometers down the road, but it just seemed to follow me all day, pouring down, and it was getting cold. Very getting towards Bath and then Kingston. Nice shoulder, very, very little traffic. You just get this occasional burst of traffic as cars come off the ferry. Once again, the <laughs> Once again, I was saved by a cafe. Nice to be able to dry out. I don't know if it would have made any difference. And I sat here for a good hour drinking my coffee made of bath water and watching the radar, hoping the weather would dissipate. But it didn't. I've been riding on the Loyalist Pathway Parkway and the Waterfront Trail 
all day and uh, the folks living here like to give it to the French because there's a lot of British flags being flown. Well, if I believed in animals coming from the spirit world, I would have to say these black squirrels would be evil spirits. What is that? It's smelly. And apparently out there is grape on it, which you cannot see because of the rain. Coming into Kingston, the rain has finally stopped. I think I'm about half an hour from my wall house. This is in, coming in from Picton. So I'm heading into this. This is a good way to run a side of way. After three days of some of the heaviest rain I've ever cycled in, it's a chance to dry out and rest and recoup in this wonderful backyard. Check out this great oak tree. Once again, Warm Showers host provided me with wonderful hospitality. What a great organisation. They made so much difference to my trip, thanks to all my Warm Showers host. With a balmy evening, it was time to head into the centre of Kingston and have a little look around. Wonderful old historic buildings through this area. And I shouted my Warm Showers host a fish and chips dinner as a thank you. Probably one of the better fish and chips dinners I'd had. And looking at the rainbow we're about to see, I think that weather was still stalking me. Though fortunately it stayed away for the next few days. Next morning and beautiful sunny blue skies. My Warm Showers host is a keen cyclist. He had the day off, so he showed me the sights of Kingston. Obviously, many fortifications along this area, a uh, history of the battles that the Canadians had with the Americans, and the Canadians are very proud to let anybody know that they won a lot of those battles and apparently burnt down the White House. And the great thing about being with a local is you get the inside advice as to which are the best coffee shops. This used to be the ramp for the road that used to go over to Wolf Island on the ice when Lake Ontario was frozen back in the 70s. Now unfortunately what I did not record him saying was that this ice road had stopped being used in the 80s after a family of four travelling across it in their motor car fell through the ice and froze to death. So a very early start the next morning to catch the ferry from Kingston to Wolf Island, Wolf with an E, to hopefully get across to the United States of America. Well that was a plan. I thought I'd be in the United States by lunchtime, but things did not go to plan. Off the ferry onto Wolf Island and into the USA border, which is just over there. About 15 kilometres, all the traffic from the ferry is in front of me, so it should be a nice quiet ride. A lot of windmills on this place.
So thinking I'd be in the United States within an hour, I just had this light meal, not stocking up with any food, and that turned out to be a bit of a mistake. I check the ferry timetable on Facebook, and as I ride across Wolf Island, I get to the ferry stop. So the ferry was broken down with some dirty fuel and no one knew when it was going to be starting up again and I really didn't have the option to ride back to Kingston and then further up and cross over a bridge would have taken an extra day or two. So I waited it out and what an adventure awaited me because I got a lift across in a tiny little boat, we got buzzed by a big Black Hawk helicopter and I finally made it into the United States and had one of the longest, hardest days of riding I've had. Stay tuned.